Ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between that, welcome on into the video. Do you ever have a song that you know maybe a lyric to, or just a bit of the tune, but you can't quite put your finger on the name or artist who made it? Once you finally find that song, it's like finishing a puzzle. It's like getting maybe one side of a Rubik's Cube done. It's extremely satisfying. But imagine that on a larger scale. Imagine that on a scale that lasts years with tens of thousands of people all looking for the same song based off a single 17 second clip. Well. That's exactly what I'm talking about today. This isn't a hypothetical, this is real life, baby, because recently there was a song that went viral for being essentially unfindable, essentially lost media called Everybody Knows That or Ulterior Motives. And no one was able to find what this song was until days ago when people were able to locate it in a location that you would not expect. But of course, I'm not going to spoil the ending. What am I, some sort of Redditor? I'm here to tell you the whole story. Take you from step one down some of the streets that we thought were going to be end to the road that ended up being dead ends. And then eventually, the plot that thickened into a thing that I cannot even really reference without spoiling what it is. I want to tell you guys, but of course we need to start where it all began, which is on a site called What's That Song, where there was a post made by an account named Carl92 that says, Pop, English, mid-80s, bad quality, everyone knows that. And the clip sounds a little like this. So, that is a 17 second clip that sent everyone into a spiral. Where did it come from? Where did it go? Cotton Eye Joe? I don't know. Holy shit, I'm dropping bars left and right. But of course, people started asking questions. There were some questions that went into the comments, some of them being like, what country are you from? I want to locate this. With, of course, Carl92 saying he is from Spain. And then it sounds like popular music that would play in a gas station or something like that. And there was another comment on Carl92's initial post from Null42x86 that had the first interpretation for what the lyrics of this snippet it could be and I'm just gonna play the snippet itself and then put the lyrics on the screen and let you guys see if they match up for you now that doesn't sound great, it doesn't exactly sound like it matches completely, but of course these lines get refined later down the line. Wow, I'm just spitting bars left and right today. But <laughs> regardless, what people started to do initially was just hop on the HTTPS colon slash let's google dot com. Search it up, see if it's on YouTube, see if it's on the Wayback Machine. People were searching all over the place using the lyrics as the search query. And it kind of ended in a dead end. They couldn't find it in the form that it was at the moment. The lyrics didn't seem right, the song was unfindable, and so the search had to continue. And theories started blasting into the stratosphere. So many different ideas, so many different theories for where this song could have originated from. People started theorizing it could come from commercials. A makeup commercial was one of the big ones, and the other one was a saline car commercial, which of course caused people to start contacting the company, and then disproved that theory. The song didn't come from that, so of course that was another dead end in this search. But there was still hope. Someone discovered a frequency. You can hear it when you listen to the 17 second clip that sounds like a song being recorded on a TV for the microphone. This frequency people were able to designate as a 15.734 kilohertz frequency, which is crazy that they were able to spot that, but not only were they able to spot that, they were able to narrow it down. They figured out that this is a tone that only plays in MTS broadcasts exclusively used in very few countries, Spain being one of them, which is of course where our hero Carl originated from. But this small number, this 15.734 kilohertz frequency, actually gave a lot more answers. People started to notice that it is a frequency that only exists on NTSC CRT TV monitors, which are from a horizontal frequency that apparently only exists on North American TV stations. Which, how the hell do you figure that out? That's crazy! But also, was not true. This was actually shot down by a Reddit user that goes by the name of Square Pies, who consistently talked about how this 15.734 kilohertz frequency is apparently a frequency that happens more often than people expect, and isn't in this specific case from North America. So no, Carl wasn't being a liar, he wasn't getting under our noses. He is from Spain. He was not just from North America this entire time in some crazy plot twist. And alongside this initial discovery, the clip was uploaded to YouTube by a YouTuber named JK. 
The account that was in uploading this initial clip no longer exists. It was terminated for reasons unknown, but with it was posted an image. The image of the pink boombox that you now see as the thumbnail for this video, or right in front of your faces for your viewing pleasure. And of course, this image became synonymous with this 17 second snippet, and is now what you see all over YouTube whenever people talk about this hidden lost media. But of course, being the insane creative users these Redditors are, they found where the pink boombox is from. They found it from a pink boombox listed on Depop. This isn't the same one, but it's a similar listing. And <laughs> so apparently using AI, they had it kind of expanded and it created the label that we now see today. There were other various theories that started to rise out of the woodwork once this started going mainstream, because of course that's the first way to find an answer is to create some theories. People started to try and point to where in the world this could have been recorded. People thought maybe the song was from Asia because they thought the lyrics sounded like someone from Asia trying to pronounce English lyrics. I showed the snippet to my mom and she thought it sounded like a German person, which I, I don't really hear many German people trying to sing English lyrics, but I, I'll, I'll trust it. And of course, one of the other theories was about the band called Savage Garden. Savage Garden is a band that I didn't actually know about until I looked into them for this video. They've made a bunch of different songs in the past, and people theorized it could have been an unreleased song from them. And that theory only got further accentuated because this lead singer, Darren Hayes, made a now-deleted post on Twitter where he just posted, Everyone Knows That. <laughs> Which is, of course, one of the names for the song right now. Everyone knows it as Everyone Knows That or Ulterior Motives. So people were like, oh my god, we did it! We did it! We cracked the Easter egg until the post got deleted, and it became just another dead end in the list of theories. Oh, and I think this is a good time to show you guys the new interpretation of the lyrics, the current modern-day interpretation that everyone believes to be the actual words to the song. So let me play the 17-second snippet with these new and improved lyrics. <laughs> And of course, these new and improved lyrics didn't really do much, but they made a lot more sense, especially since it gave us a new name for the song, alongside everyone knows that, Ulterior Motives. Both of the names being essentially what the song's known as if you want to look it up today. However, these lyrics did do one thing, and that was disprove a theory that some people had. I don't know who specifically came up with this theory, but I heard it at first from the YouTuber All Things Lost in his video he made about the topic, in which some people theorized... This song was made by Carl. Some of the lyrics like tell me the tune and everyone should know made people believe that this guy made this and put this on the site just for people to baselessly search for something that does not exist. But these new lyrics that make a lot more sense kind of disprove that theory. And I still have a few different dead ends to show you before we get to the final destination of this adventure. And the next trip stops us on Reddit yet again from the user DonJ3FE. And this theory essentially says that he has a buddy who knows better. <laughs> he has a buddy who is a music guru, an 80s music guru and said, yes, this song's from the 80s. Thank you. We weren't aware. But he said it comes from a show that he believes is called MTV's Basement Tapes, which is a show that ran from 1983 to around 1989, where they showcase new and up-and-coming musicians, almost like an American Idol, American Idol, but for little guys, tiny little dudes, silly little guys. And the theory is that it showcased on this show once and was never seen again, and maybe it was recorded from an episode of that. But the timeline doesn't match up. People were theorizing that the actual recording itself happened in 1999. And also, this is a bit of a dead end in itself. Like, even if we had the answer, the idea that it no longer exists and happened in a single episode of MTV doesn't satisfy the crowds. That isn't an answer to the question, so the search continued. See, on the Everyone Knows That subreddit, because there's a subreddit for a 17-second lost media snippet, Everyone on that subreddit found a name that kept popping up regarding films in that time that they thought could have been correlated to the song. And that name is Christopher St. Booth. He's a producer, he makes music, and he's worked on films for sci-fi and even Amazon Prime in the modern day, but we're talking about the 80s. We're talking about a long time ago. And so one of the moderators from the Everyone Knows That subreddit, One Truth, spent 12 hours in a night skimming through vintage films that had Chris's name attached to it, trying to find music that could match the song snippet. And shockingly enough, they did not find it. They did not find the 17 second snippet while skimming through all of these old vintage movies, but there was one detail they were missing. See, movies and shows that you've made a long time ago are easy to find. You look them up online by name, they're most likely listed there, but there is one small detail about this song that made it just a little bit harder to find. And that's that this song wasn't made for any normal movie or show. Oh, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, can I get a drum roll for a moment? Because this song snippet came from porn. Yes, 
Our boy Carl92 back then was a gooner. He was in deep. Apparently, there was a post made on the Everyone Knows That subreddit by South Pole Ball that said, after following one truth lead of Christopher St. Booth, Christopher Booth created music for porn films. Went through each video and watched them until I found Angels of Passion 1986, to which I went to an hour and seven minutes and found EKT. They watched an hour-long prawn video and found the music, which is crazy to me. The amount of effort that went into that. They actually even have a link to the video as well as the IMDB to the actual thing because apparently prawn movies have an IMDB, which I didn't know was a thing. And so now we have the song, we have the music, but now there's one more problem. It's full of moaning. <laughs> There's, there's just moaning all through the song. I can't hear any of the words. And there's different posts on YouTube, like, everyone knows that unknown song found freaky version. But of course, alongside that, there was linked the safe for work version, where a lot of it was edited out. It has a beat to it, I like it. But of course, I'm not going to play the entire thing, because that is for you guys to listen to yourselves. I'm going to link it in the description to this video. You can go ahead and listen to it yourself. But, my god. The idea that there was a song that we couldn't find for essentially 40 years, because this is a 40-year-old song, and we finally found it by skimming through some old-timey prawn is crazy. And it's really cute because Christopher St. Booth, who has an Instagram account, actually posted this online, saying, well, today my mind has officially been blown. Wow. Hashtag ulterior motives. Hashtag EKT. Because he didn't even realize people were looking for his song. He probably didn't even remember making that song because he's done so much since then. But it's so funny that, like, he's like, what? You've been looking for this? Wait. My song? <laughs> the whole time? And alongside that, if you go to the initial website where Carl92 made his initial post, people were doing little proposals for what the song could be, like Carl beating his meat, or everyone you need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> calling Car our boy Carl a gooner, because that's what he is. But what makes this even more concerning is some people were doing the math for Carl's age. I forget where they found it, but I only heard the actual result. That apparently, at the time of its recording, he should have been seven years old. Carl, what are you doing, buddy? But of course, all that gooning being pushed over there, the song had been located after two years and seven months of searching, as well as 40 years of essentially not existing. They found the ulterior motives. Everyone knows that song. And of course, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. I'm sorry about waiting till the end of the video, but I actually got this recommended to me by like five different people. We have people like Genome recommended it to me. And then we have people like Music Disc telling me to look deeper into it, as well as Radiant Bliss. And then my friend Ryan. Hi, Ryan. FaceTimed me last night and asked me to cover it as well. So, of course, I couldn't help myself. I had to dig into this, and I'm so glad I did. But, of course, thank you guys for sitting here and watching this video that I put together for you to watch. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you subscribe if you're new and like the video if you haven't already. And stick around for whatever I make next. I make videos all the time about goofy things I find online. Thank you guys for being outstanding. And, as always, adios, arrivederci, goodbye, good night, and never stop searching.